I'm Greg Williams, uh, Deputy Global Editorial Director of Wired, and I'm delighted today uh, to be joined by Gregoire Cortine and Jocelyn Block, uh, a neuroscientist and a neurosurgeon, to discuss how they're helping people with serious spinal cord injuries uh, to live uh, better lives. Gregoire, you're a neuroscientist. Why were spinal injuries something that you wanted to work on? Well, I've always been passionate about movement, being a sport elite, and uh, this is why I study how the brain controls movement. And through this research, I face many individuals with spinal cord injury, often young male who had like sport accidents, which really compelled me to launch my career, focusing on developing solutions to help people recover after spinal cord injury. Jocelyn, you're coming from a very different perspective. You're a neurosurgeon. Um, for you, why is this something that you particularly want to work on? You know, I studied medicine and I learned that after a spinal cord injury, people have to get used to this and they will stay the whole life in a wheelchair. And I've seen so many young people who from one day to the other have this, you know, destiny that changes completely. And I thought that having the possibility to change this paradigm would be fantastic. What are the typical sort of impacts of a sort of serious spinal cord injury? So these people have an accident, they come to the emergency, they, they can talk, they, they, are, they do, did never, they never lost consciousness, but they cannot move the arm and legs, you know. And the consequence is that they are sent to rehabilitation. It lasts in general a few months mm. and then there is nothing else to do. And Greg, while your solution involves the use of an implant, can you just describe where that implant is situated and how you sort of undergo the procedure? Well, the idea is that to walk, the brain needs to send a command to the region of the spinal cord that control leg movement. And when there is a spinal cord injury, this communication is interrupted. And the consequence, as Justin said, is paralysis. So we aim to restore this communication between the brain and the spinal cord with what we call a digital bridge, meaning an implant to record the electrical activity generated by the brain when we want to walk. So there's, just so I understand, there's, there's two implants. There's one sort of near the brain and then one actually on the spine itself. That's true. So we have two different surgeries. A first surgery at the level of the brain. So we open the skin perform what we call a small craniotomy. It's remove a bit of bone, and we replace this hole by this implant, 64 electrodes that cover this brain region that controls movements. And then we close the skin. So that's the first surgery. And the second surgery is to implant electrodes over the dorsal aspect, so the posterior part of the spinal cord, also controlling leg movements. The electrodes are then linked and connected to what we call a neurostimulator. It's a little pacemaker that is delivering electrical impulses to the spinal cord in order to activate the different muscles. And what are the challenges that you face as a surgeon around that procedure? So the ch challenges are the precision. That's what I like to say. It's very close to the to the watchmakers in Switzerland. Yeah. So we need to be super precise because we need to be able to reach and to target each muscle. And Greg, well, what are the technological sort of challenges that you'll face in terms of the, uh, the, the work that you're doing? Yeah, the, the beauty actually of this digital bridge is the apparent simplicity when the person walks again and you don't even understand what's happening. Then there is an AI, imagine like brain GPT, decoding this electrical signal, which is the language of the brain, to understand what the person wants to achieve. And then this AI delivers wirelessly the information to the pacemaker. All this operation must occur within the normal operation of the central nervous system. Mm. So in about half a second, you need to decode, stimulate, send information wirelessly so that the person can walk very naturally, just thinking about it. Where do you hope this is going to go in the next sort of five or ten years? Where, where, where are you aiming for this to be? We don't want to stay at N egal 1. No, we have like two test pilots for this technology. But our goal is to make it available across the world. Mm. And this is why we founded a company, Onward Medical, that is now scaling up this technology. That means making it 
small, easy to use, optimize all the AI aspects so that it's scalable and we can share it with other medical centers in order to make it a, a therapy widely available. If you, I can ask you the same question, yeah. It's very important that we reach this target. And what does it imply? It implies a lot of clinical studies, what we call it pivotal clinical studies, with a larger number of patients. And then if we reach the endpoints we, we have targeted, then we'll have the possibility to have an that it will be approved by FDA, the, the CE, and then insurances will reimburse it. And for us, this will be uh, a victory. When do you hope that this uh, treatment will be widely available? So it will really be a, a staged development in the sense that you know, further spinal cord stimulation system, which is a purpose-built stimulation system, will be validated maybe for simpler functions, as Justin said, maybe blood pressure, then mobility. And as it goes, we will increase the complexity of the technology. For example, adding the digital bridge. So we believe that within the next few years already, some neurological function will be treated with this spinal cord stimulation technology, but it will take at least until the end of the decades in order to see the full digital bridge validated and widely available. And Gregoire, can you talk a little bit about how the support of partners has really helped you with your research and to push forward uh, this new technology? Well, for me, it was very important receiving this Rolex Award for Enterprise to finally shed some light on the dramatic consequences for people living with spinal cord injury. Individuals who are still considered having an orphan disease, there's actually virtually zero solution that can help them improve their recovery. And this award was really the opportunity to bring awareness and bring other partners to support us in developing our treatments. Thank you for talking to us today, and we're really looking forward to following your progress over the coming years. Best of luck. Thank you very Thank you. much.